let's make a spell checker. If you open speller.c, then you'll see that most of the functionality for checking a text file against a dictionary is already made for you. Dot slash speller, passing in a dictionary text file and then another text file, will check that text file against the dictionary. Now, dictionary text files will contain valid words, one per line. Then speller.c will call load on the dictionary text file. It'll call a function called check on every word in the inputted text file, printing all misspelled words. Speller.c will also call size to determine the number of words in the dictionary and call unload to free up memory. Speller.c will also keep track of how much time is used to conduct these processes, but we'll get to that later. So what do we need to do? We need to fill in dictionary.c. In dictionary.c, we have the helper function load, which loads the dictionary, the function check, which checks if a given word is in the dictionary. The function size returns the number of words in the dictionary. And finally, we have unload, which frees the dictionary from memory. So first, let's tackle load. For each word in the dictionary text file, load will store those words in the dictionary data structure of your choosing, either a hash table or a try. I'll go over both in this walkthrough. First, Let's talk about hash tables. Say you had 10 billiard balls and you wanted to store them. You might put them all in a bucket. And when you needed a specific numbered ball, you'd take one out of the bucket at a time looking for that ball. And with only 10 balls, you should be able to find your ball in a reasonable amount of time. But what if you had 20 balls? It might take a little longer now. What about 100? 1,000? Now would we would be much easier if you had multiple buckets, maybe one bucket for balls numbered 0 through 9, another bucket for balls numbered 10 through 19, and so on. Now when you needed to look for a specific ball, you could automatically go to one specific bucket and search through that bucket. And if each bucket has approximately 10 balls, then you could easily search through it. Now since we're dealing with dictionaries, one single bucket for all of the words in the dictionary will probably be far too few buckets. So let's take a look at hash tables. Think of it as an array of buckets. And in this case, the buckets are our linked lists. And we'll distribute all of our words amongst these multiple linked lists in an organized way using a hash function, which will tell us which bucket a given key, a given word, belongs to. Let's represent this schematically. The blue boxes here contain values, and red boxes point to another value pointer pair. We'll call these pairs nodes. Now, each bucket, as I said earlier, is a linked list. In linked lists, each node has a value as well as a pointer to the next value. Now, dealing with linked lists, it's very important that you don't lose any links. And another fact to remember is that the last node, if it doesn't point to another node, points to null. So how do we represent this in C? We define our struct here. And the value in this case is a char array of length, length plus 1, where length is the maximum length of any word, plus 1 for the null terminator. And then we have a pointer to another node called next. So let's make a small linked list. First, you'll want to malloc your node, which creates space in memory the size of your node type and make another node, again, mallocking. Now, if you want to assign a value to a word, then we might say node1 arrow word equals hello. This arrow operator dereferences the pointer and accesses the struct's variables. This way, we don't have to use both the dot and the star operator. So then I have node2 arrow word equals world. And there, the values are populated in my nodes. To make the links, I'll pass in node1, arrow next, accessing that node star, that node pointer, equals node2, pointing node1 to node2. And there we have a linked list. So that was just one linked list, but a hash table is a whole array of linked lists. Well, we'll have the same node structure as before, but if we wanted an actual hash table, then we can just make a node pointer array here, for example, size 500. Now notice, there's a tr going to be a trade-off. 
between the size of your hash table and the size of your linked list. If you have a really high number of buckets, imagining having to run back and forth in a line to find your bucket. But you also don't want a small number of buckets because then we're back to the original problem of ha having too many balls in our bucket. OK, but where does our ball go? Well, we first need to have a ball, right? So let's malloc a node for every new word that we have. Node star new node equals malloc size of node. Now that we have this structure, we can scan in using the function fscanf a string from our file, if that's a dictionary file, into new node arrow word, where new node arrow word is our destination of that word. Next, we'll want to hash that word using a hash function. A hash function takes a string and returns an index. In this case, the index has to be less than the number of buckets that you have. Now, hash functions, when you're trying to find one and create one of your own, remember that they have to be deterministic. That means that the same value needs to map to the same bucket every time that you hash it. It's kind of like a library. When you take a book, based on the author, you know which shelf it should go on, whether it's shelf number one, two, or three. And that book will always belong in either shelf one, two, or three. So if new node arrow word has the word from your dictionary, then hashing new node arrow word will give us the index of the bucket of the hash table. And then we'll insert that into that specific linked list indicated by the return value of our hash function. Let's look at an example of inserting a node into the beginning of a linked list. If head is a node pointer that indicates the beginning of a linked list and new node indicates the new node that you want to enter in, just assigning head to new node would lose the link to the rest of the list. So we don't want to do this. Rather, we want to make sure that we hold on to every single node in our program. So running new node arrow next equals head, and then head equals new node will preserve all of the links and not lose any. But what if you want your list to be sorted? Because having a sorted linked list might be easier for searching in it later on. Well, for that, you'll need to know how to traverse linked lists. To traverse a linked list, Let's have a node pointer, a node star, to act as your cursor, indicating which node you're at, starting at the first element. Looping until cursor is null, we can conduct certain processes and then advance the cursor when we need, using cursor arrow value. Remember, this is the same thing as saying star cursor, dereferencing cursor, then using the dot operator value. So updating the cursor is by, going, by assigning the cursor to cursor arrow next. Say you determine that D becomes in between C and E. To insert the node, have the new node D point to the node E, which is cursor next. And then C, the cursor, can then point to D. That way, you maintain a list. Be careful not to lose your links by moving cursor arrow next to D right away. All right, so that's how you might insert nodes load them in, load words into those nodes, and insert them into your hash table. So now, let's look at tries. In a try, every node will contain an array of node pointers, one for every letter in the alphabet plus an apostrophe. And each element in the array will point to another node. If that node is null, then that letter isn't going to be the next letter of any word in a sequence, so because every word indicates whether it's the last character of a word or not. Let's look at a diagram. Hopefully things will be a bit clearer. In this diagram, we see that only certain letters and certain substrings are being listed out. So you can follow certain paths, and all of those paths will lead you to different words. So how do we represent this in C? Well, every node now is going to have a Boolean value indicating whether that node is the end of a given word or not. And then it'll also have an array of node pointers called children, and there are going to be 27 of them. And remember, you'll also want to keep track of your first node. We're going to call that root. So that's the structure of a try. How do we represent this as a dictionary? Well, 
to load words in. For every dictionary word, you're going to want to iterate through the try. And each element in the children corresponds to a different letter. So checking the value at children index i, where i represents the specific index of the letter that you're trying to insert, well, if it's null, then you'll want to malloc a new node and have children i point to that node. If it's not null, then that means that that given branch, that given substring, already exists. So then you'll just move to that new node and continue. If you're at the end of the word that you're trying to load in the dictionary, then you can set that current node that you're on to true. So let's look at an example of inserting the word fox into our dictionary. Pretend we start with an empty dictionary. The first letter, F, will be located in children index 5 of the roots, children array. So we insert that in. The letter O will then be in children index 15 after that F. And then X will be even below that, branching off of the O's children. And then because X is the last letter of the word fox, then I'm going to color that green to indicate that it's the end of the word. In C, that would be setting the is word boolean to the value true. Now, what if the next word that you're loading in is the word foo? Well, you don't need to malloc any more space for F or for O because those already exist. But the last O in foo, that one you'll have to malloc, make a new node for that, setting the is word boolean to true. So now let's insert dog. Dog will start with index three of the roots children because D hasn't been created yet. And we'll follow a similar process as before, creating the substring dog, where the G is colored green because that's the end of a word. Now, what if we want to insert do? Well, this is a substring of dog, so we don't need to malloc anymore, but we do need to indicate where we've reached the end of that word. So the O will be colored green. Continuing that process for every single word in your dictionary, you've loaded them in into either your hash table or your try.